Welcome in. It's Streaming University with Kirk Harnack, your professor. This chapter is all about an Apple HLS encoder configuration. Let's get right to it. Let's take a look now at setting up an Apple HLS encoder instance and streams. So we have already have one set up. Let's take a look at how it's configured by hitting the Edit the Instance button right there. You can see we've given it a friendly name for use internally, WKXY09 for the processing in HLS. I chose the audio source as WKXY program and the processing as Omnia 9 processing. For the transport format, we should choose ADTS, which is what you choose for HLS. There are other uh, examples as well, RAW for smooth streaming, for example, ADIF and ADTS CRC. So we'll choose that one. Uh, the fragment duration. Now, this is not really set in stone anywhere at all. This is how long in milliseconds is each file in the continuum of files that represent the HLS streams. And in the audio uh, area, uh, we think that probably 5 seconds or 5,000 milliseconds is a pretty good number. If you have the fragment duration to be too short, well, there's a lot of activity between the client and the server uh, in get fetching small files. If they're too long, well, then you may run into a situation where if you've downloaded, oh, say, 30 seconds of audio, or you're trying to, and you run out of uh, data on your um, cell phone connection because you're, you're going under a tunnel or who knows what, uh, then you may not be able to fetch uh, that whole file. So a five-second file seems like a pretty good uh, place in the middle where you need to be. You can also tell it to synchronize the stream start to fragment duration aligned steps. We'll have more on that later. All right, what about bit rates? Well, typically uh, for HLS streams, you're going to have three different bit rates. You're going to have uh, a bit rate that's nice and high that you'd love people to listen at if they, if they have uh, the connection to support it. And in fact, for uh, uh, iTunes, uh, iTunes Radio, for the HLS streaming there, uh, their specs require you to have uh, your top stream at 256 kilobits per second. That's really good quality. That will sound very, very good. But not every connection is going to support that continuously. So we've also made a uh, stream at 96 kilobits per second and another stream at 56 kilobits per second. Now, you may notice that we've chosen different algorithms for each one of these. That is something that is promised to work well in the future on all players. Not every player handles that uh, handoff well right now. So we'll have to see how things shake out in the long run. Uh, Apple based players, and there's things on iOS devices and Mac computers uh, with OS X, those should all work pretty well with uh, even different algorithms. So we've chosen AAC-LC, also HEAAC for the middle bit rate, and HEAAC-V2 for the lowest bit rate in case your player has to drop down to that. You can add bit rates. Let's say we want to add a very low uh, bit rate. We can do it right here, choosing, uh, let's say, HEAAC-V2. And let's choose a low bit rate like uh, 24 kilobits per second and save that one. Now we go all the way down to 24 kilobits per second. And um, now once we have the encoders operating at different um, bit rates, now we have to put those into a stream. Um, I already have one made here, and I'm sending it just to a local folder for local testing. You can um, select a, a smooth streaming server stream or an HTTP live streaming server stream for HLS. So that's what we have selected. We can choose to edit this stream and have a look at it. Here we go. We give it a friendly name, WKXY-HLS. Uh, at the moment, I don't have a metadata source to go in there, but if I did, that's where the source would go from having been previously set up for metadata. The stream name, WKXYHLS, that's what you're going to see on your player. And storage, now this is key. Do we want to store these files in a local folder, or do we want to send them to an FTP server somewhere? Now, for an actual on the air HLS stream, you're going to be sending these to an FTP server somewhere. And this is going to be an ordinary file server running HTTP server software in the background. And uh, you'll specify the you know where that's supposed to go if you choose that. But for choosing a local folder, here is the local folder at which that appears. The C drive, program data, Telos systems, uh, Zipstream uh, X2. And you have a kind of a long uh, URI here, but all the way to um, uh, streams slash HLS slash WKXY dash HLS. And then finally, you will end up with uh, a manifest file name, which uh, is going to be WKXY dash HLS dot M3U8. 
We'll show you how that works in just a few minutes. We do want to, uh, at least in my case, I want to delete existing files. In other words, if I stop this encoder and then restart it sometime later, I don't care about the old files that are there. I want to get rid of them and start afresh with, uh, with that. The archive size, this is how many file fragments you save in your folder. Three is probably fine. That's 15 seconds, uh, you know, three times our fragment duration worth of files on the server. And uh, you can also choose something called the transport type. Uh, almost all HLS players support a .ts transport type. If you're familiar with streaming video, um, multi-rate adaptive streaming video, then you're going to have .ts files. But for audio, there is a standard that supports what we call elementary streams. And they're not in a TS wrapper. The TS wrapper does add a pretty fair amount of data that doesn't have anything to do with uh, streaming the audio. So .ts can work fine, uh, but you will be sending a lot more data to get the same audio through. Uh, the elementary streams are more efficient because there's less other stuff in them. So uh, we would choose those. Uh, we'll see how the standards shake out and how many uh, players end up supporting elementary streams. I've had pretty good luck so far on these myself. And then you can embed a cover picture uh, each nth file, and you can um, uh, choose how often you want to update the, the cover picture, and you, there's a folder that you place that in uh, on your machine. So there you go. That's the setup for the uh, audio processing and for the bit rates and for the stream and where those files get segmented and get placed. And that is how you set up HLS streaming. I know it seems like a lot, but I got to tell you, you run through it a couple times and it becomes easy. You're going to love it. It actually makes a lot of sense. And it results in these adaptive multi-rate streams that they just work. They're really cool. Stick around for the next episode where we'll be talking about metadata. <laughs>